Hello and welcome to PM Studios Java Programming Tutorials number 7. Today we're going to be going over do while loops and we're also going to be adding on to the factorial calculator that we had developed in tutorial number 6, that, which was the, uh, the for loop tutorial. Um, so basically what I've done is I've already loaded up the, uh, the factorial calculator that we did back in the last tutorial. Uh, we're just going to be tacking on a small bit of information onto it. Uh, the first thing we want to do though is we want to add another integer into our list so we're gonna go ahead and toss it on you can call it whatever you want but for me I'm just going to call it boolean check or bull check for short and then we're gonna create the boolean that it's going to be checking and that's gonna be do again so basically the essence of this uh, tutorial is going to be the exact same thing as tutorial number five on while loops where we're going to have a boolean then ask them if they want to um, do another process or do another run through the program and then uh, an if statement to get the answer for that and if it changes then the program terminates if not then the program stays on and you run through it again so it's a pretty easy uh, pretty easy tutorial today uh, the majority of it you guys are already familiar with um, it's just introducing you to the one and only um, post test loop and after we get this all finished up, I'm going to do a little explanation as to why it's so important to have a, or what the main difference is about post-test loops and some scenarios where you might want to use them. So basically what I've done is I've already put in the, uh, the boolean, and then I've encapsulated everything that's uh, actually going to be executed inside a do loop. So basically you just type do, all in lowercase, and then put your braces, and then you gotta select everything on the inside and go ahead and indent it once and then this is where the while comes in you just type in while after the brace and then you're gonna do while do again equals equals true put a uh, semicolon there so there you go that's pretty much the essence of what we're going to be doing um, Oh, also one more thing, once we get the do while loop all set up we actually need to prompt the change where we'll have again what we like to call an endless loop so we're going to do system dot out dot print line. Oops, forgot to capitalize system. Would you like to run another factorial? There we go. Parentheses one equals yes, like last time. Two equals no. <coughs> So that's all set up, and then we gotta do bull check equals input dot next int. And there's by no reason or no means do you need to follow my uh, my formatting setup, which is you know capitalize each and every single word in the class names, capitalize the uh, the first letter of the second word in um, in method names, and the exact same thing in uh, and variable names and so on and so forth. If you want to create your own, uh, if you want to create your own methodology, then you're more than welcome to. This is just what I'm used to, so it's what I use. Okay, so we're going to create our if statement. If bull check comes in as one, and then we're going to set do again is equal to true. Now, also for those of you who are wondering, um. You don't necessarily have to do do again equals true. You could just do do again equals do again. And that would solve the issue. And, but just for the sake of typing, because in this case it is shorter, I like to type out the true. Close that. Else, again, uh, going back to uh, lesson five, uh, the reason why we don't do an else if is because the only value that we're looking for, the only value that will concern the state of the program continuing on will be number one. So anything else doesn't matter if they enter a number or a letter. Um, it could be an ampersand for all I care. Uh, as long as it's something other than one, the program will terminate. <coughs> And there's also a methodology that you want to use when uh, going through your loops. It's that you always want to put the most likely scenario before any other scenarios. That way it saves memory and time on the program. Um, when you're running through, say, like 700 lines of code and all of them are doing their own unique thing at the exact same time, 
you'll actually notice a performance boost if you put all of your uh, all of the most likely scenarios at the beginning of your loops as opposed to at the end. So when the program goes down, all it has to do is look at the first scenario and then it goes, oh, okay, that one's true, and then it jumps back up to the top of the program. So just a little uh, memory saving tip right there for the larger programs later down the line. So I'm going to go ahead and compile that and we're going to push that and in last tutorial I told you guys that you don't want to go higher than I don't remember exactly what but that number that you don't want to go higher than with your factorials is 14. 14 will provide you with the highest number and I'll show you what happens when you go to 15. It actually goes negative so um, obviously there's an, there's an issue somewhere in there in lying with it. So the highest number you want to go to with your, uh, your factorials is 14. So we're going to go ahead and terminate it, and like I said, you could put in Y, and it errors out. But either way, yeah, input mismatch. Either way, it terminates the program regardless of what you enter, whether it be a number or a letter or a symbol, as long as it's not one. So the uh, what I did want to get into is the essence of a do while loop. The reason why you would use this is because there are um, there are cases called switches um, inside do statements. So, for instance, uh, let me create a new program here. So, for instance, if we had a do loop, we could put in here a switch, and then inside the switch we'd have individual cases. So case and then you'd enter whatever you want so that case would be if da 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 so on and so forth and then we terminate that and then we go on to case number two and then that'd be if whatever and so on and so forth you get the general idea but the reason why you do a do loop or a do while loop in the uh, in the first place would be to um, to do these switch statements in which uh, you could do you know while boolean value equals true so that you could run through multiple uh, multiple statements of these cases and get a whole varying range of answers without having to create multiple loops so specifically for um, more complex calculators more complex general calculators than the one that we made like for instance if you wanted to take the time and write out a program to do an entire scientific calculator it might be in your best interest to do all of the different functions inside of a do statement with a switch Whereas for something smaller and more simple like what we were doing in the first couple tutorials, it would be more sensible and easier for people to understand if you were to simply put down um, if statements. So that's just something to, uh, to wrap your head around. I will not be going any further into do-while loops. I will not be going into switches or cases because it's, um, it's really uncommon that you'll actually need to use them or at least in my in my experience it's really uncommon that you'll actually have to use them so that's just something to to understand the importance of running a post test loop is so that you can test it after it's run through the process one more time as opposed to testing it before the process runs it one more time i mean it's purely a matter of preference but for the sake of typing i would strongly suggest that in most cases i, I emphasize the most in most cases you just use a while loop where you could use a do while so that's about it for today's tutorial. I hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. <clears throat>